Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. So there's so much going on in this NFT and Web3 space that there's just a lot to cover. However, I decided to do a different type of episode today, try to test out a new format. I'm going to call it the Nifty Newsweek, and I'm just going to recap some events and some things that I normally wouldn't do, because normally I try to tape it very topical. Each episode is just one subject, but this one I'm going to hop around, get some headlines, and this is sort of more on the format of how I normally do the Nifty Business Week newsletter. However, this week there is so much going on that the stories that I covered in the newsletter and I still had so many other things that I wanted to cover. So I decided to test out this format to see how this goes. So let's get started with all of that. First, let's go to a major sale that took place. CryptoPunk number 4464 sold for 2,500 ETH. And that is not a record. However, this is what the apes are going for at this point. The apes are, there's only 24 of them. One of the rarest, according to Rarity Tools, this particular ape is ranked number 32 in the entire set. And the only trait that is uh, above the apes is the aliens. CryptoPunks really has no uh, utility other than the pixelated art that it has, but it has that historical value value of just being that OG 10k project and really a lot of investors have poured into it and that is the why the value is what it is because it has cultural significance and of course that kicked off all the 10k projects and all the punks and everything but 2500 ETH that is no joke in this quote unquote bear market that's what that went for so that was interesting to see that we have over 2 million dollars worth of sales in this particular one and despite everything that's going on people are saying they're losing interest and all that but that is good news for the space to see that one of the premier projects the big brands are still relevant and that's just great to see going forward. Another interesting story that I saw was that GameStop NFT had over 3,000 ETH worth of sales in their first two days. And that might not sound like a lot considering this is a marketplace, but considering that Coinbase, which launched in May, has a significantly larger company of value. And we think of Coinbase being this behemoth in Web3, unlike GameStop, who has been a traditional video game marketer or a resale retail store. And I think of back in the day buying used games and trading in games. It was GameStop that we went to. It was the comic book store in my town at the time. And once that went out, it was really only GameStop where you're going to swap and get games and systems and trade in. So now that they're venturing into Web3 and having this NFT thing, which is very interesting to see that they're launching the marketplace. And in two days, they have almost doubled what this crypto giant Coinbase has done since May. And it was so much fanfare about what was going to happen with this Coinbase thing. And I won't lie, I thought it was going to make a huge difference. But based on what I'm seeing right now, it seems like all of the Coinbase people that are interested in NFTs were already on OpenSea. So when Coinbase launched their marketplace and it just launched to crickets, there was a Super Bowl ad and all that stuff. So much fanfare and hoopla. And we thought the world was going to change when they launched, but it didn't happen. Since May, only 1,700 ETH compared to 3,000 ETH for GameStop, who really wasn't even in this space. What does that really mean compared to OpenSeas, who is obviously the king in the volume as far as the value of what's being traded, and they have 15,000 ETH roughly per day that is being traded on the platform. And of course, way down, we have Looks Rare, which we know is not doing anywhere nearly as the volume and has the tension that OpenSea has. Even them, they're doing around 2,000 or so ETH per day, and their numbers really fluctuate. They're all over the place. Some days they're having 500 ETH, and then other days it's 3,000, 4,000, but it seems to be bouncing around and averaging, even though that's a dangerous uh, number to work off of. Median is much more uh, relevant and powerful, but it's averaging around 2,000 ETH. So just showing you that is a lot ahead of Coinbase's 17 100 ETH since May. It's great, off to a great start in a couple days. GameStop, this video game retailer, which really made the news because of all the stuff that was happening in the stock market last year and all of the investors that went against the short head funds and they just really bought into GameStop. And it was the first meme stock that really just took off. And these apes, if you will, just took the market by storm. 
and a lot of hedge funds made some serious big mistakes, but they lost a lot of money in that. And that was just the retail investors coming in and fighting the big machines. So that's very interesting to see now that their DGENs, if you will, are uh, now into that whole culture and they're supporting GameStop going to the moon with this by buying on the platform. So love to see what happens there. I couldn't unfortunately uh, go on to the platform because I am blocked by my location. Uh, most likely because I'm in Jamaica and um, my VPN isn't working. I turned the thing off because it was just running so slow and I wasn't able to get onto the thing. So I have to find a better VPN. So any suggestions, please feel free to reach out to me. What VPN are you using and which one uh, do you recommend? Because now I'm going to have to go on that mission, testing out different ones to see which one I should get now. Some interesting things, some development, CoinGecko, which had their initial NFT annual conference, if you will, back in November, shortly after I launched the show, actually, they called it GeckoCon. They're currently doing their two-day GeckoCon, the second annual, so the 2022 GeckoCon, there's a lot of twos in that sentence, second annual, two-day, 2022 CoinGeckoCon is currently going on the 14th and the 15th. And it's very interesting. It's a lot different than the event. Last year, there were uh, a lot more days. I think it was either a four or a five-day event. There was probably closer to 1,000 speakers. Now they're closer to about 200 speakers, excuse me. And just a very different thing because last time, it was a lot of projects presenting their different things to people to buy into it, collectors. And to be honest, it was a shell fest for most of the time. And that was something that sort of turned me off from it. But this year, they weeded it down. They cut down the days and everything. And... And it really wasn't a shell spec. It was mostly a builder's conference, in my opinion. It was more geared towards people that wanted to know about the infrastructure of things, how to build, how to launch, how to have the software integrate with different Web2 applications, how to promote and market building communities. Things like that were really the focus for this year. So personally, I think it was a much better format. Last year, it was a lot of selling, a lot of fluff, if you will. But the thing that I don't like is these panels. I've heard it a lot of times that you're just not going to get a value from the panel. And I really saw it in this, maybe because this is my area where I spend a lot of time in. And normally when I see a panel discussion, I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. But if you're someone who really has a deep knowledge of a particular topic, well, a panel discussion really isn't going to bring any sort of real value to you. And that's what I was finding with a lot of these panel discussions. There were surface level uh, communications. And honestly, I've gotten more information out of Twitter spaces. However, some of the speakers were just absolutely great. I'll be reaching out to some of them, get in touch with them, ask them some questions. So looking forward to seeing how the rest of the content plays out. But from what I'm seeing so far, that's what it is. There's some keynotes. So that is what I'm really looking forward to. I think the keynotes are going to really hit it out of the park. So very interesting going on nonetheless. And most likely I'm going to go to CoinGecko, GeckoCon, what is that, third annual in 2023. So going forward, that's something that I will be looking forward to. And it's great to see that all of these builders are still in the space. Quite a few people in there, a few, probably thousands of attendees were on this thing virtually, of course. And those are just the people that are there live. That doesn't count the people who are just going to watch the replays and all of that. Because a lot of the sessions, I'm going to catch by replay. Because they have three tracks going at the same time throughout the day. And of course, I'm at work and I'm doing this. I'm listening in one ear, have the phone in my pocket. Don't really have to watch the visual. I just want to hear what's going on. And that's what's going on right now with GeckoCon. Something interesting I also saw is that the NFL is expanding their NFT ticketing solutions, their efforts going forward, which is great anyways. I think the NFL is by far one of the premier brands, companies in the world. And as far as sports leagues and everything goes, as far as the U.S., they basically print cash. No other sports league, any kind of franchise within the NFL is making way more money than any team in virtually any other sport around the world. Maybe the Premier League in the U.K., is probably it for soccer or football around the world outside of uh, American football. And but really the NFL that's like American royalty at that point. Those people own NFL teams and they're printing money and it's a huge cultural impact. There's only 17 games per season now. I'm, I still have to get used to saying that there's 16. So it's really people tune into that has a huge draw. A lot of people, the only reason why they have cable is so that they can watch live sports and nothing draws people to the TV like an NFL game. So with that said, seeing that they're embracing all this NFT stuff with their players and everything is very excited to see. They have commemorative NFTs for different occasions, but now they're doing this whole ticketing solution and they did it quite a bit last year. However, this year they're really 
ramping up their things, making commemorative tickets, and they're switching from Polygon over to the Flow Network. So that's going to be very interesting to see why they're doing that. They're being advised by Ticketmaster, which knows a thing or two about selling tickets. They're in good company there. See how that all works out. That is a traditional ticket retailer advising them how to do this. But what's really interesting with this is with this NFT solution, of course, that there's going to be a royalty that can go back to the NFL and just as we with creator royalties and everything that we'll see on these markets. And they're actually going to have their own unique proprietary market with all of this stuff. And it's going to, of course, generate more revenues on the secondary sale. So very interesting to see how that's going to go, how they're going to integrate all of this stuff. And of course, there's a lot of older, traditional people that are not necessarily techie. So it's not like they're forcing everybody down this channel however they're doing that and i think it's going to open up a lot to sports fans in general and from the statistics that we've seen a lot of sports fans overlap with crypto people so uh, whether it be the card collectors or the gamblers or whatever just the casual fan that wants something memorabilia jerseys and hats tend to make good collectors nft people crypto and so forth so there's a great overlap great opportunity for a business and growth in this so i'm interested to see where that goes and lastly, the thing that I'm going to touch is the Uplift world is having its first ETH sale. Of course, I covered that in depth on episode number 235, but just very interesting things are going on there. If you're not familiar with it, haven't heard that episode, long story short, that is a world that is built upon the Minecrafter game. So that is that pixelated art game that has been very popular for the last 10 years or so on the Nintendo Wii, Xbox, PlayStation, as well as the PC and it's just very popular around the world. Hundreds of millions of players. Oh, and they have an app as well. In China alone, the numbers are just ridiculous. How many downloads that free app that they had, the free version of the app, I think it was 400 million, if I'm not mistaken. You can go back and listen to that episode number 235 where I go into all the details. But they have their lands that has been on wax. However, they're doing their first NFT land sale on ETH and it kicks off the 16th of July and it's going to kick off uh, depending on traffic and the gas prices and all that sometime between 6 p.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. Eastern time. So you just have to check in to see what's going on with that and that's all trying to get the the best rate because during the weekend of course there's going to be low gas and they're trying to hit a good time where people who are coming from wax who have no gas whatsoever that might be buying this and getting onto ETH and they want to accommodate that make it just an acceptable a reasonable amount that people are trying to pay for these because with wax one of the best things why I love wax and it's just a great entry point it's a very user friendly what have you but there's no gas so getting some of those people to come over to ETH, it is a very difficult to get them to pay gas fees. And I know that was the hardest thing and why I didn't want to come over to ETH, but eventually I made the jump. But anyways, the two lands that they're going to be launching with this is Etheria. See the name there, Ethereum, Etheria and DGen1. So a lot of these people, of course, are DGens. They're going to come in, they're going to buy this land, but they're partnering with a whole bunch of projects. I believe it was a hundred and they have different plots scattered out throughout the two maps and you have the opportunity to buy around them. So with this, unlike some of these other lands, like say Deej Sensorland where you just put in the address and you just uh, generate there and it, there's no walking through is very different in Uplift in the sense that there are these portals where you're generating and then there are rails that travel take you all over the land so depending where uh, these uh, particular projects are building they build something just amazing on their lot it's going to draw a lot of traffic there so if you do have a piece of land that is located next to one of these prime spots where there's going to be a lot of traffic you also have the opportunity to have people pass through your lands, check out your stuff, and then through this whole tokens and economies of the, the upliftium that's going to be in the game, you're going to get, of course, from anyone traveling through the rails through your land or traveling to your land, and you can make some income off of that. Very interesting to see how that's going to go, how they have those partner lands scattered all across, and the fact that this is their first ETH sale. On Wax, they were done by auction. This is just a set sale port zero. 0.05 ETH. So very affordable, especially in this market, even though ETH did have that little pump today at the point of recording this, but who knows what's going to happen tomorrow probably comes right back down. Because if you've listened, I really believe by July 28th is when we're going to find out that this is a recession and um, all these quote unquote ups and downs that we're going to see, we're going to see a great buying opportunity. Everything supposedly is going to go down with that. I don't know why there was a pump today, but anyways, that's way off topic of where I'm going right now. But with this, tomorrow, 
there is going to be this, the first Ethereum sale for them. So it's very interesting to see. There's some interesting things going on in that whole economy of Uplift because even today I discovered that there is a builder that, that basically you can hire them to um, build out your land for you and they do it by a, a group. It's like a committee. Let's say someone is great at doing the landscaping. Someone's great at doing the buildings and you want it to be an attraction. You have a massive lot, but unfortunately you're not very good at buildings. So you might not have the time or you don't want to uh, really learn how to play the Minecraft game, but some people are buying these lands to basically be an investment. They want it to be an attraction within the game. So anyone that travels and goes to this land, you can have this DAO basically build out this entire lot for you, just put up this massive thing, and then it could be a, an attraction, if you will, a world wonder. And uh, people will cut across the upland uh, and come to your land, see what's going on. So that is just something interesting that I saw. But of course, they have a lot of activity going on. Their community is very passionate because Minecraft players are very passionate to begin with. But then you have the Minecraft players combined with the NFT people. And as you can tell, that we are also very passionate. So you combine those two together, that is a very passionate community. So very interesting to see what's going to go on there. Hopefully, this is a success. And, and I hope it doesn't overshadow the wax as I, much as I love to see the project succeed and everything for that nature. But because wax I, I do love my wax and i do want to see uh, the wax community and everything uh, still survive but i really want the eth one to take off and maybe it'll bring people in because once they come in say okay this is awesome let's check out the genesis let's check out some of the old ones and see what's going on and they'll bring people over to wax and it'll just be very interesting and we can see more drops and things and activity on the free gas chain network and just some fun things are going on over there so hopefully you enjoyed this i went all over the place but those are the stories that's going on right now i didn't have the bandwidth to put that into the newsletter some great things that are going on and if you like this sort of format maybe on weekends i will recap what happened during the week and the things that i don't put into the newsletter i can do in an episode just like this shoot through some things see what's upcoming for example like i just did that drop but still stay tuned to the newsletter which is at niftybusinessweek.com that comes out weekly and i cover a lot of stories that i normally wouldn't do a full episode about and i give my take on a particular topic and of course there's always giveaways and things of that nature if just for signing up for that if you have a wax wallet of course as i said i do love my wax send your address over in a simple reply and I'll airdrop you some NFTs. And with those NFTs, it gives you access to me, different things. If I'm doing a giveaways and what have you, usually I'm going to do it through these NFTs, the people that are holding them. And we just have some fun with that. And everything is still in the working progress. I'm still building this out, trying to figure out how to go with it, but we're just having some fun with the NFTs as we go. But I just want to thank you taking the time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.